Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today we are going to discuss about a new library which is called as Pandas Visual Analysis. And this is an amazing library because guys, most of the exploratory data analysis just can be done with the help of one line of code with the help of this particular library. Again, uh, if your data set is too much complex at that time, it becomes difficult. But yes, if you have a data set, which is medium complex, you can definitely do the exploratory data analysis within just a line of code. So this is basically about the pandas visual analysis. You can actually read everything about it. Now what we are going to do, first of all, we are actually going to install this particular library. So in order to install this library, I have written a command. You just need to write pip install pandas visual analysis. So when you do this and when you execute it, you'll be able to see that the requirement is already satisfied. Okay, because I've already installed it. But if you are doing it, just write pip install pandas visual analysis. Here the whole code is actually given. Now why this library can be important because I've seen many, many people who, who really struggle with respect to exploratory data analysis. Even though I have made so many videos, like what should be the structure of doing or performing an EDA, exploratory data analysis of any data set, right? That particular analysis will be done by this library itself. Again, guys, it is important that you try to do your work pretty much quickly. But yes, if the data set is more complex, definitely you cannot use this. Like if the data set has many, 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 many category features, many, many, many category features. And this library is also useful when you have, suppose if you have in your data set some category features, it will handle those category features also and it will help you to do the exploratory data analysis. So let's begin. Okay. So first of all, you need to install the pandas visual analysis and then you just import sns library over here i have imported sns library the reason i have imported because i want to take some of the data sets that are present inside the seaborn libraries and there are many many data sets that are present inside the seaborn libraries now in this particular case suppose if you really want to find out all the libraries that is present inside seaborn at that time you can just write get data set names so here you have anagrams and scom attention brain network car crashes diamond dots exercise flights gammas iris data set penguins planets tips and titanic i hope you have heard about iris data set titanic data set tips data set uh planets data set and all but in this case i'll just take one example and then we'll also try with some other examples like titanic data set because in titanic data set you have some of the features like some of the category features so we'll also try to see how it actually handles so first of all let me just write sns.load underscore data set with iris this will actually download the data set from the seaborn library so once i execute this and once i see df.head here you have sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width the species is over here a classification problem it is a classification problem multi-class classification problem over here you have probably three categories uh with respect to the sepal length sepal width petal length petal width you need to find it out okay so once we are doing this now one thing that you need to note if suppose if you are actually working in the form of uh, suppose if i'm trying to uh, solve this particular problem i'll take this dependent feature in my another variable convert this into label encoders like 0 1 2 right and then we will probably run a machine learning algorithm to actually solve this particular problem right so what i'm going to do over here is that let's import the pandas visualization visualize analysis i mean visual analysis library and just you'll be amazing to see guys just with the help of one line of code you'll be able to understand how we can actually perform the eda so from pandas visual analysis you're going to import there is a library which is again there is a class which is called as visual analysis when you use this particular library, this library will be performing all the exploratory data analysis work that I have already shown in my previous video, step by step, right? Everything, all the graphs will be shown. Now see this, I have imported this library. Okay, so this is my visual analysis library. All you have to do guys, just write visual analysis and provide your data frame inside this. Don't worry about how many missing values it has, how many category features it has, uh, whether the output feature is also a category feature, Don't you don't need to worry. Whether it is a regression problem, you need not worry, okay? So I'll just execute this. Once you execute this, you'll be able to see this amazing graph. Now here you can see this amazing graph. And first of all, you have three types on the top. Let's see what all things are there. So first you have selection type. In that you have three types. One is standard, additive, and subtractive. I'll tell you about additive and subtractive, but let's go with standard, okay? Now in standard here, if you click on mean, like uh, if you write df.describe, right? At that time, you'll be getting all these things, count, 
with respect to mean sepal length this all values will be actually getting if you get minimum first quartile median third quartile and maximum suppose if you write like this df dot describe right and if you execute this oops uh, describe spelling is wrong it happens it happens again it's a coding <laughs> it usually happens so here you can see that in df dot describe you will be getting count mean all these particular values right now similarly you are getting all these values just by writing this one line of code right apart from this these all things are also getting executed just you can understand that this whole thing the the way it has been represented it is basically represented by getting the output of this df dot describe okay so this is one way now similarly if you really want to select some other values right suppose i want to select minimum with respect to minimum you'll be able to see that this value and that value will be matching right now let's go ahead and try to understand about this subtractive guys then we'll come to additive because once we understand subtractive it will be very very easy to understand about additive uh, functionality over here now in subtractive you'll be able to see guys we have an option over here and here you can see that the plotted diagram that you see over here it is based on sepal length and sepal width you can change it also you can make it petal length you can make it sepal width or petal width or anything that you want okay suppose i make it as spacious you can see that it has been considered seto size over here versicolor over here virginia ka is over here suppose i really want to check petal length with respect to sepal width i can check this if i want petal length with petal width i can check like this now see what is this subtractive the subtractive says that out of all this particular data i have an option to remove some of the data suppose if i if i do like this let me just take some better one okay let me take this graph okay let me select some data over here so i when i select some data you will be able to see that that data will get removed and when that data is actually getting removed it is also called as subtracting or removing that specific data you will be able to see that all the sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width will get reflected will re get reflected since i removed all these values now there are two more graphs like this over here you can see this now in this graph when i consider the column column uh, as petal length or like that you will be able to see that this all values has been gone because i have removed this data initially when i did not remove the data suppose if i now if i click on additive and suppose i want to include all this point okay now here you see that the graph will change completely right this is the histogram graph with respect to the whole data okay this is with respect to the whole data now suppose i if i want to remove some data and check how the diagram will behave right how this plot will get behaving so i i have removed over here you'll be able to see that this all things have got updated and you'll also be seeing that this whole thing has got updated this histogram will also get updated because all these values has been removed similarly you can check with sepal width you can check with sepal length you can check with petal width so all these values are getting removed you can also do the normalization now you see when i do normalization by default this is getting converted between 0 to 1 right when i do the normalization initially it was between 0 to 35 but when i do normalize you will be able to see that it is getting normalized right so here you can see that we can remove some data and we can remove some data now with respect to this removal over here you can see that scatter plot is something different with petal width and petal sepal length right now why this is important let me just additive make a additive over here okay now we know that in most of our data set we have outliers right i really want to see suppose this histogram this histogram gets derived you know on top of this histogram we can also uh, create a pdf function right probability density function cumulative density function suppose if there are some outliers suppose if i remove the outliers i really want to see the what will be the effect of this histogram or what will be the effect of this particular uh, pdf function that will be one way and by this you can also see that whatever exploratory data analysis we are actually trying to do over here it is pretty much simple right so you can also this produce this with the help of plotly over here you can you have an option of clicking it this this whole diagram is actually created with the help of plotly this all functionalities are there you can zoom in you can zoom out right you can auto scale you can uh, reset the axis you can do a lot of things you can zoom you can capture as a png so when you do this you can see that a png image is being considered and taken over here and similarly here also you have the same thing now if i really want to compare with different different features i can do it you know otherwise if i really wanted to plot this diagram i have to use plt dot scatter with respect to sepal length and petal width and again i have to go and check like that right so if i if i take an example like this uh if i write import uh, matplotly dot pi plot as plt right and if i write plt dot scatter 
I hope so. Okay, one line I missed. Percentile matplotlib inline, right? I have to write this. And if I write df of sepal length, sepal underscore length, right? And if I write df of petal underscore width, I'll be getting the same thing. Now I'll be getting the same thing. But again, why have to write so many lines of code when everything is being available in this visual analysis DF? Again, guys, again, I'm telling you, if many people, oh, it is getting automated and everybody will again ask that same question. I really, really don't want to go inside that. But understand that instead of writing 10 lines of code, you'll be able to do it in just one line of code. That is the main advantage of Panda's visual analysis. And just try to explore, normalize it, unnormalize it. And probably by taking this idea, you can add some more things because these all are happening in the Plotly uh, library itself, right? Uh, the whole front end of ML, this dash enterprise dash uh, is the most downloaded trust framework for building ML and data science web apps. So you can use this, you can add more of your idea Suppose you want to create one more diagram over here, which will be able to do your log normalization, which will be able to do other kind of normalization if your data is not normally distributed. So on top of it, you can add some more functionalities if you really want. And that is how innovation will come. That is how many things can actually come. Right now, what, what will be my idea by seeing this, right? I will try to create some more two, three diagrams where all the exploratory data analysis will be done with the help of just one line of code. Now this was with Irish data set guys. What if, if in our, some of our data set, we have category features, right? Like in this particular example, let me take the Titanic data set. So Titanic data set, what I'll do, I'll load it over here and I'll go and see my df.head. You can see that there are a lot of category features. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to perform the visual analysis, do df.describe, you'll be able to see all this particular value. And after that, you'll also be able to see that, uh, Okay, I'll not execute this. Instead, I'll just try to execute this. Now with respect to this, you can see that, suppose if I really want to see, right, embarked underscore town, adult underscore male, right? This has been converted from category feature into integer values, right? With respect to age, you can see zeros and one, trues and false. Now similarly with other respect to other one, right? You'll be able to see. This is with respect to age, with respect to survived, right? And when you select age and age, obviously you'll be getting a straight line, right? And you can see class, you can also see adult male. This is a category feature altogether. And you have embark underscore town, another category feature. So this is how you can actually work with the other diagrams. Again, here also, you can basically do subtractive, you can remove like this, and you can actually see how the changes in the diagram will happen, right? So I hope you like this particular video, guys. So just try to do with some other data set over here, as I've actually mentioned. So I hope you like this video. Please do subscribe the channel and uh, press the bell notification icon. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you and all. Bye-bye.